So brothers and sisters, you just finished reading uh, the account of Pentecost from Acts chapter 2. It's this account that tells of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on all of the believers, on all of the disciples as they were gathered together in that upper room 50 days after Jesus' resurrection. Pentecost celebrates the the giving of the Holy Spirit on all flesh, on all people. Up until this moment, the Holy Spirit came and rested upon individuals throughout Scripture. But it's at this point in history, as Jesus has ascended uh, back to the right hand of God the Father, that God pours out the Holy Spirit as the, the visible presence, as the, the presence of God living and dwelling within each of the believers, within each of us. And it's his presence, it's his power that moves us forward. You see, for the disciples, for the, really for the whole church, Pentecost is an important event. It's a defining moment in the life of the church. As you look back on your life, Perhaps you will recall defining moments. For me, the, the most defining moment for me in my life has been a September 11th. I was still in high school. We were living in Baltimore, just a few miles from uh, the Pentagon. And it was at that moment on September 11th, almost 20 years ago now, that I knew life as we knew it had shifted. Life as we knew it in America, and and certainly in North America too, had changed. Friends, we're living through a defining moment. This is a defining moment that we're living through because the way that we interact, the way that we deal with people, the way that we view the world has fundamentally shifted over these past few months. We're living through a defining moment. This reading from Acts chapter 2 highlights a defining moment, a point in time, but it's a point in time that has lasting effects, lasting consequences for the church, and for each of us individually. For the Spirit of God is poured out powerfully as he sends the disciples and sends the church out, sends you and me out to bear witness to the mighty works of God. So let's look at this defining moment here in the life of the church together today on Pentecost. Uh, Pentecost is an ancient holiday. It dates back thousands of years to the Old Testament. Originally, it was a holiday where God's people would come and bring the first fruits of their grain harvest, a, a, a feast, a festival of thanksgiving, offering God thanks. Eventually, it turned into a holiday remembering and giving thanks to God's work on Mount Sinai, the giving of the law, really seeing that as God's provision for his people in defining the relationship they were to have with each other and with God, remembering, recounting of the law. And so it was that God chose 2,000 years ago to pour out his Holy Spirit on his church that he chose this festival, this festival of giving thanks, this festival of remembering all God had done. He pours out his Holy Spirit on the church. And that was an important moment for the disciples, an important moment for that early church because they were still gathered. They were still coming together They were still being shaped by what Jesus had done, what he had taught. 
how he had conducted ministry. And you can imagine that they perhaps would have wanted just to carry on with life as usual, life as they had come to know it over the past three years. They wanted to carry on with life and ministry as normal. But God, the Holy Spirit, had other ideas. For we hear the defining moment here in Acts chapter 2. It's marked by uh, life-changing, life-shattering things. I'll read for you verses 2 and two to 4 again. It says, And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You see, it was a defining moment for the disciples, a moment they wouldn't forget. I mean, who would forget the sound of a mighty rushing wind, tongues of fire, being able to speak in new languages, in languages that they had never learned, that suddenly they were able to convey the truths of God. It was a defining moment for the disciples, a moment of of reckoning, a moment that you can imagine made them realize that Life had shifted, that life had changed. Life as they knew it had changed. For truly, that's what had happened. Because in the giving and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, God signals and testifies that his spirit and his good news of salvation, of Jesus Christ, who's come to live, to die, and rose again, and now is seated at the right hand of God, That message of salvation is for all people. It's for all people. That's what this defining moment in the life of the the church is all about. It's all about the sharing of the message, the proclamation of Jesus to all nations, to the whole world. For we see that in this moment, It said that all those who were gathered were amazed. They were perplexed. They were bewildered. I'll read verses 6 and 7. It says, At this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished saying, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And then a little bit later on, verses 11 and 12, it says, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? You see, this defining moment in the church marks the sharing of the gospel making Jesus known in a way that all people can understand it. It wasn't some unintelligible, you know, babbling that the disciples were doing. Instead, it was speaking in the languages of all those gathered there in Jerusalem, there in that place. You see, the people were amazed and perplexed, not just because of the, the wind and the fire and everything else, but, but most importantly, because they heard of the mighty works of God in their language. They heard of the mighty works of God. They heard of God, all that God had done for them in their language so that they could understand it. For that is the work of the Spirit. That is why the Spirit has come. The Spirit has come. The Spirit has been poured out on all believers so that Jesus would be known. For that's that's what the Spirit does. We say that the Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies 
the whole Christian church, the true knowledge of faith. Work of the Spirit calls us to Jesus. He gathers us in. And the Spirit is always moving us forward with that mission, with that purpose, that Jesus would be made known, that Jesus would be proclaimed. The Spirit is always moving forward. And brothers and sisters, I believe that this is a moment that the Spirit is calling us here today in these days, that the Spirit is calling us as the church to move forward, to move forward in making Jesus known. I would say that today is a new Pentecost moment, a defining moment in the life, certainly of the world, but in the life of the church as well. Now is the time for us, Trinity, to move forward, to be moving forward. You know, I've I've been harping on this point, but I I want us to try to grasp this, that we're not going to go back to business as usual. Even in a few weeks, once we're allowed to gather, our gatherings are going to look drastically different than what we once knew. Some may see that as a negative. Some may see that as a challenge. But I see it as a tremendous opportunity. For the reality is, as Peter goes on to explain here at at Pentecost, in this first Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, as Peter goes on to explain, he says the days are short, that this is a sign of the last days, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You see, if it was the last days 2,000 years ago, how much more now are we living in the last days? You see, time is short before Jesus comes again. That might be tomorrow. It might be in, in a year. It might not come for, for another 50 years. But we know that time is short, that time is of the essence, and there's an urgency with our message. There's an urgency with our message, for we are in the last days. We are in the last days as the Spirit is poured out on all believers. Peter gives this explanation starting at verse 14. He says, But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. These men are not drunk. These people are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in these last days it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And that your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. See, this is what's happening. This is what has happened 2,000 years ago. This is what God continues to do In the church, he continues to pour out his Holy Spirit. It's in the name, so that the name of Jesus would be known. This is how our our passage for today ends. And it says, and it shall come to pass, the words of the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, now more than ever, The world needs what we have to offer as the church. The world needs Jesus. The world needs hope of Jesus, the promise of life given in Jesus. The world needs peace that comes not from a vaccine or the hope of a vaccine, not from what the government might be able to offer, but from the hope, from the peace, from the life that only God, our Father, our Creator, our Savior can offer to us. Now is the time that the world needs to hear this and to hear it in 
their own language. You know, again, as much as this has been a challenge forcing us out of our our status quo, so many people are being reached by by this medium, by video. And I, I want us to consider as a church, what is our language today? You know, for so long, we've had this notion of a build it and they will come. You know, the church is here, we're going to gather together and people will flood the doors. And perhaps, you know, God's used that in the past and perhaps God will continue to use that in the future. But this is forcing us out to be the church, to be the followers of Jesus in our homes, in our businesses, in our workplace, in our relationships with our family and with our friends. You see, what amazed the people is they heard of the mighty works of God in their own languages. So I ask us to consider what is the language of today? What is the language of, of leader here today? can be smart and say English, (laughs) which is true. But how do people, how do our neighbors need to to hear of Jesus? How can we share the love of Jesus with them in a way that they connect with, in a way that they understand, in a way that speaks to their heart? For the desire of the Spirit of God, the desire of God himself is that all who call on the name of Jesus, would be saved. That's our challenge, Trinity. As we have been sent as the witnesses of God, sent in the power of the Spirit of God, God is sending us out into the world to proclaim him, to make him known. I encourage you this week, today even, to pray for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit on our church, on our lives individually. And I I pray specifically, I ask you to pray with me that we wouldn't see this as a challenge to be overcome, you know, something just to be outlasted so we can get back to doing what we've done for so many years, but that we would see this as an opportunity, an opportunity to go forth, an opportunity to bear witness, to proclaim the good news of Jesus to our neighbors, to our community, to our country, to this world. Would you pray with me that this would be an opportunity And that God would pour out his Holy Spirit. That he would pour out his Holy Spirit. That that our young people would see visions. That our old would dream dreams. For now, Trinity is the time that God is raising us up for. That God has appointed us to go out to make him known. I encourage you to pray boldly for a fresh outpouring of his Holy Spirit. Pray fervently, especially over this next week. And I ask you to share with me what God lays on your heart, especially what he has for us as a church, what he's calling, inviting us as, as Trinity to do, to be, to go out, what our life and ministry together will look like. Share with me what God lays on your heart, the dreams, the visions that he gives to you so that we can make Jesus known, so that we can be about growing, committed followers of Jesus. And so, Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the the gift of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, first of all, that you are ruling and reigning at the right hand of God and that you will come again, that you will come again, that all who believe and trust in you will share life with you, will dwell with you now and forever. 
we do thank you on this Pentecost Sunday. As I've prayed already, we thank you that you have not left us alone. You have not left us as a church or individuals powerless or hopeless or fearful, but that you have given us your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would fill us with a new measure of your Spirit, that you would fill our hearts with a sense of urgency to make you known in a world that needs you, Jesus. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. Empower us. Send us out in your name, in your power. Lord, I pray that you would give us dreams. You would give us visions. That you would lay on our hearts all that you are capable of and all that you are inviting us to partner with you to do. I invite you even in the the quietness of your homes at this moment, just to stretch stretch out your hands, set them in your lap as a posture of receiving. And simply pray these these words, come Lord Jesus, come Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, fill us afresh and anew with your power that we would proclaim the mighty works of God, the mighty works of Jesus in all that we do, in all that we say, in how we live. Stir afresh in us, Lord, we pray. Amen.